Hi everybody, I'm Bill Brennan, welcoming you to another edition of Honolulu on the Move, the show that brings you the latest news and information about the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. We had a big celebration last month when heart officials and federal, state, and local leaders turned out to unveil Honolulu's train number one. Let's take you out right now to the Rail Operations Center for that big event. car trains can hold anywhere between 650 and 800 passengers at any one time. Those trains will travel at a top speed of 55 miles an hour and will average 30 miles an hour, which includes the time stopped at our stations. Now those trains will arrive at the stations every five and a half minutes during the peak commute hours and about every 11 minutes the rest of the day. You know, the construction of our rail system is a very complex process especially when it comes to relocating utilities. Relocating the utilities along the Dillingham Boulevard corridor was the topic of a recent Hart Board Project Oversight Committee meeting held at Mission Memorial Auditorium. Uh, we are dealing with a wide variety of utilities, uh, electrical, communication lines, street lighting, water, drainage, sewer, gas. So all your basic uh, utilities along uh, a roadway that you would normally find in most roadway projects. <clears throat> the city center project alone has the largest amount of utility relocations amongst all three of our segments uh, put together. Uh, if you just look at the linear feet of electrical and communication lines as well as street lighting, uh, cables, and the water lines and drainage, we are talking about a significant amount of linear footage. And again, it's not that, that uh, they're all over the place in multiple conduits. Uh, many, in, in, in many instances, they are in the same conduit. It's just, it is multiple lines within the same conduit. So that is how we uh, delineate some of the linear footage. So it is quite a, a volume of utilities. Uh, and these are just some photos of the types of utility work that is incorporated as a part of, of utility relocations, whether it's trenching, uh, overhead work, 
heavy equipment, that kind of stuff. Okay, Brennan, a question? Yes. Brennan, if, um, I mean, we know, because we talk about this and we live this, what city center is. But for those who are tuning in, can you please explain, when we're talking about 130,000 linear feet of electrical communications in city center, where does it start and where does it end? Sure, and I have a few slides that kind of show aerials of the corridor and I broke it up into a little bit phases so we can talk also uh, the types of utilities that are prevalent in those specific regions. Um, so, but in general, city center, uh, the corridor starts at the Middle, Middle Street Transit Center on Dillingham Boulevard, goes down Dillingham all the way past uh, Costco, Honolulu Community College to Ka'ahi Street which is just past Costco on the Diamond Head side by the Ivalay substation. And then it continues on to uh, Nimitz Highway by the Chinatown area, continues past downtown by Aloha Tower, and then on to Halikuila by the uh, Federal Building, down Halikuila until we hit Ward Avenue, where we then cross over right at Ward Avenue uh, through the Rosses. Uh, and then we get on to Queen Street. We continue down Queen Street to Waimano, and where we also then also cross over onto Kona Street, and we end at, um, we cross P.E. Koi, and then we end on Kona Street at Alamoana Shopping Center. And so I do have some aerial photos that kind of show the, the corridor. So Brennan, on, on this first slide, the linear feet that you show, this is for the entire project? This is not just City Center, correct? This is just for City Center. Just for City Center. Just for City Center. Thank you. We have a whole separate slide for airports if you want to have a separate presentation on that. Too. Okay, thank you. Okay, so the Dillingham corridor, we'll start, I'll start on the east and work to the west. So on the Eva side, where we start at Middle Street Transit Center, uh, this area shows the Dillingham corridor all the way to the Ivalay uh, Station on Ka'ahi Street, where we primarily have uh, and again, we have the full menu of utilities, whether it's drainage, water, sewer, electric, uh, gas, and uh, your fiber optics, whether it's AT&T, Hawaiian Telecom, Oceanic, Time Warner Cable. And then we have a whole different variety of sizes of pipes of both sewer, drainage, water. In the Kaka'ako corridor, which basically goes from uh, the Chinatown station or Ivale, station to the Civic Center station. Uh, again, we have a whole variety of, of uh, utility lines. Uh, it does differ, again, a little bit in terms of the types and the sizes of utilities, whether it's drainage, where we go up to a 40-inch uh, drainage line, a 30-inch sewer line, a uh, little smaller uh, distribution water lines, electric, gas, Hawaiian Telecom, Oceanic, Time Warner Cable. Uh, the biggest thing here, if you notice, compared to the Dillingham corridor, uh, the el electrical work is much uh, less significant because we, we are not dealing with the 138s in this area. And then we continue further, wet, uh, further east um, between the Civic Center Station in Kaka'ako, the Kaka'ako Station, and the ending at Ala Moana Center. Uh, again, a variety of utilities, drainage, 36-inch uh, and 24-inch drainage lines, water lines, uh, sewer connections, electrical lines, gas, Hawaiian Telecom, and Oceanic Time Warner Cable. And again, this area also does not include a 138 kV uh, line that we are going to have to deal with. Any questions on the corridor? No, but Brennan, I have a, board members, any questions? I have, a, I have a question, Brennan, just because there are so many different utilities in this corridor that you have to work with. Uh, for all of these utilities, do we negotiate agreements with the utilities or do we come to some understanding with them about the process that's involved in, in relocating their utility? And if so, can you describe how we do that? Sure, we enter into uh, construction agreements with each of the different utilities. Uh, it, it basically defines um, who is responsible for what. Um, we, HART, as a part of those agreements, is responsible to pay for the relocation of each of the respective utilities, uh, whether it's the electrical lines, the drainage lines, water, fiber optics. Uh, it, it also uh, 
discuss his responsibilities in terms of construction. What aspects of the work is to be done by Hearts contractors versus what specific work is done by the specific utility itself because uh, many of them do perform or self-perform their own work because of the proprietary nature of their utility. Uh, so there is a lot of coordination between Heart, our contractors, and the utilities uh, based on those agreements. And then once we get into construction, uh, that coordination must continue. So, so Brennan, um, for example, let's take uh, a Hawaiian Electric because it's the 138 KVs. So if we're going to underground 138 KVs, then who, to what extent does the, quote, contractor for Heart, what would they do in that process? And at what point does the HECO uh, I, I guess personnel or subcontractor, whoever they may hire, does the, does the sure. work. At what point? Do we know? So, and, and there is two different phases too, right? We're talking about the design phase and the construction phase. Uh, so, so as we're taking uh, Hawaiian Electric as an example, Hart's consultant is doing the, the majority of the civil design for the undergrounding, the, the trench, the conduit, um, all of that kind of stuff, the finish work. And then HECO takes that and then finishes its um, design for how it's going to interconnect into their system. And then on top of that, when we get into construction, Hart's contractor will be responsible for the major civil work. So digging the trench, putting in the conduits, whatever grouting, uh, the, some of the, the connection work, the physical connection work. And then HECO will then come in, pull its cable, make the connections themselves, and then do the energizing. And then Hart's contractor will then do whatever finish work that is gonna be needed for the, the final uh, civil, civil grade. So okay, so <clears throat> the next set of slides and then uh, kind of like an animation shows you the, the s complexity of, of what's gonna happen throughout the entire project. Not just the undergrounding, but I mean, not just the, um, the utility relocation work, but also how the utility relocation work starts to coincide with other aspects, including the guideway construction as well. So this is just a, an example. This is not how it looks everywhere along Dillingham Boulevard, but this is just a representative illustration of what some utilities might look like. Uh, the, you have the 138 power poles, the light poles, the, one, the, the wooden pole on the Mackay side. Uh, and, and then you have the two lanes of traffic in both directions with the single turning lane in the middle. And as you can see, uh, there are a couple utilities right in the middle of the road where our column is gonna go. So right there, uh, some of that has to, uh, it's very clear that those conflicts, and, they're, that, and that's what we call as a conflict, those conflicts have to be moved. But in order to do that, there's a whole bunch of other utilities that are also in the way in order to accommodate some of these larger utilities. So the next slide kind of starts to circle all the different utilities that have to be moved at some period of time from its current location to a new location, and in some instances, from its current location to a temporary location and then back to a permanent location. And then that is intended to get to a final configuration where we are clear of utilities uh, below our foundations, uh, the 138 uh, metal poles are gone, and under, the 138s are underground, and everything is kind of in a little bit more logical uh, setup. So this drawing just kind of shows uh, it's, a, it's, it's very messy, but that's what we're dealing with. A lot of utilities all over the place, and it's not just all in one direction. As you can see, there's a lot of lateral connections or lines going across the road uh, to get from these large distribution lines. Um, there's serv uh, service connections for sewer laterals, water laterals, all kinds of, th kinds of things. Uh, fiber optic connections to businesses, um, power connections with, from the 12 kilovolt lines. So the first and foremost, we, we focus on the conflicts that are in the way of the shafts. And so that's what we first have to look at relocating. And then if it's a larger line, then uh, we need to look at how we fit this into a puzzle. And we do that by manipulating the different lines in different locations. So, you, so moving one line can then precipitate the need to move 
two other lines or three other lines. And so that's, this is kind of an iterative process, which is why relocation of utilities is probably your biggest risk. And it's also the most complex in terms of, uh, of, of coordination because one thing then affects a whole bunch of other things uh, down the line. It's, it, it very much is a domino effect. So Brennan, can you go back one slide? Yep. So yes, if I, that's your final, I mean, I know it's not engineering. I know it's a schematic for the purposes of discussion. But basically, the blue boxes and, and circles are intended to represent the final location after all the relocation is done, right? Correct. So there's not a lane of travel that does not have some excavation done to place a utility beneath it, right? There is basically no lane that will be saved at some point in time. Yeah, so can you explain to the, to the viewers and the, and the people here today how the design-build contractor, and I know they dictate the means and methods, but basically how they will do that and will they be able to keep a portion of this boulevard open for the traveling, traveling public? So, and then that's why it just makes sense for the same contractor to be doing all of the work because then they can sequence the work properly themselves. So they can, they can do look aheads to see uh, where, what lines need to be moved and where so that they can start thinking or strategizing how they're going to do their traffic control as well. What, where on the road can they dig a trench while at the same time preserve two lanes of traffic on Dillingham Boulevard open at all times? Uh, either two lanes going in the townbound direction in the morning or two lanes in the outbound or the, the EVA bound direction in the afternoon uh, as is probably will be required by the Department of Transportation for uh, capa capacity, corridor capacity to get onto um, H1. <clears throat> but also w at least one lane of traffic in each direction during the middle of the day. And so those are some of the requirements that um, we will be placing on the contractor. Um, even though we are floating ideas, extreme ideas, of potentially working with the businesses in the corridor in specific regions. So like on Dillingham, we would probably look at an area from Ka'ahi or the Ivale substation to Kokea Street or maybe to Waikamilo, uh, where we can look at closing down Dillingham Boulevard completely in all directions overnight from say 8 p.m. To, to 9 or 9 p.m. at night when most businesses have already closed HCC uh, stops classes at nine o'clock uh, and then let the contractor get in, do what they need to do, hammer out uh, uh, as much as they can uh, unobstructedly and then reopen four or five o'clock in the morning. Uh, we believe that by allowing our contractor to do that, we, in that specific stretch, we might be able to reduce the schedule by about 20% in that specific area, um, which I think um, would benefit many of the businesses. And, and we are just focusing in the, in the industrial business areas, not in any residential areas. So um, th this, this corridor from Waikamilo to uh, Ka'a, he seems to be a very logical area to be able to float this kind of proposal. Okay, so Brennan, when you say that, and I understand that's, that's a decision that that Hart and the city will make and then dictate to the, to the contractor. Correct. Um, what's the lead time for you working with the businesses and the community to make sure that they understand when and if you're gonna have a full shutdown? Starting now. Okay, so we've already started some of that outreach. We've already started floating the idea. We've been meeting with some of the agencies uh, who would be affected by it. We've been meeting with um, some of the large, larger businesses, specifically in that corridor, the Costco's, the Zippies, the City Squares, uh, Dillingham uh, Shopping Center, which is Kamehameha Schools, uh, Honolulu Community College, uh, all of those um, uh, major businesses in that specific area, including um, Institute for Human Services, uh, anyone who might be impacted by a cl closure of that magnitude, we've already started to float the idea. And then as we start to get a little bit more certainty, we would start to work with them on specifics. And because part of our outreach is to understand what is their business operations? When do they have deliveries? Where, what roads do they typically have deliveries? What types of trucks do they bring? That kind of thing. So it's an educational process for us first, and then we can work with them on what some of the specifics would end up being. Okay, thank you. That Dillingham Boulevard corridor construction will of course happen well in the future, but right now there's plenty of progress on the construction going on on the west side. Let's take a look at that.
And that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of all of us on the project team, mahalo for joining us today. And we'll see you again next time for another edition of Honolulu on the Move. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on our next Honolulu on the Move show, go ahead and hit us up on Twitter or Facebook, just two of the places where you can stay informed with up-to-date information on the Honolulu Rail Transit Project. And you can view our latest project videos on our YouTube channel. If you'd like more information on the project or would like a presentation to your group or organization, give us a call at our project hotline at 566-2299 or contact us via our website at honolulutransit.org. You'll be able to keep up with the latest news and information about the project, important meeting dates, times, and locations, and examine the official documents that are guiding the project's planning and construction. Take some time to visit honolulutransit.org. <laughs>